Buenos dias and happy Sunday. Welcome to Kingdom Worship Center. On behalf of our pastors, Bishop Gregory Dennis and Pastor Tanya Dennis, thank you so much for choosing to worship online with us today. Please stay tuned. Service will begin shortly. Center small groups are still meeting weekly and they are a great way for our members and friends to engage in a biblical community by intentionally gathering regularly for the purpose of joining in God's mission together. Need information on when our small groups are meeting? Please send an email to info at kingdomworshipcenter.org to request more information and make sure that you invite a friend. Are you following us on social media? If not, make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at KWC Maryland, like our Facebook page, Kingdom Worship Center, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Kingdom Worship Center Media to get up-to-date information and special messages from our leaders. Are you an essential worshiper? Do you miss the fellowship of the saints? Join us for outdoor service held at our Columbia campus, second and fourth Sundays, weather permitting, at 8.30 a.m. sharp. The address is 9160 Red Branch Road, Columbia, Maryland. Make sure to bring your lawn chair and your mask as we continue to practice social distancing.
for joining us today. Service will begin shortly. Center. On behalf of our pastors, Bishop Gregory Dennis and Pastor Tanya Dennis, thank you so much for choosing to worship online with us today. Please stay tuned. Service will begin shortly. today. Service will begin shortly. Thank you so much to everyone who continues to give as Kingdom Worship Center endeavors to live out our mission of Kingdom Impact. Because of your generosity, we have been able to be a blessing to our community by hosting food drives and helping families in their time of need. If you have not already given today and would like to partner with us, please use one of the options listed on the screen. And remember that God loves a cheerful giver. Center small groups are still meeting weekly and they are a great way for our members and friends to engage in a biblical community by intentionally gathering regularly for the purpose of joining in God's mission together. Need information on when our small groups are meeting? Please send an email to info at kingdomworshipcenter.org to request more information and make sure that you invite a friend. Are you following us on social media? If not, make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at KWC Maryland. 
like our Facebook page, Kingdom Worship Center, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Kingdom Worship Center Media to get up-to-date information and special messages from our leaders. Are you an essential worshiper? Do you miss the fellowship of the saints? Join us for outdoor service held at our Columbia campus, second and fourth Sundays, weather permitting, at 8.30 a.m. sharp. The address is 9160 Red Branch Road, Columbia, Maryland. Make sure to bring your lawn chair and your mask as we continue to practice social distancing. welcome you to our Sunday morning service. We pray that the Lord is right where you are. So get up from where you are, whether it's in your living room, your dining room, in your bedroom, wherever it may be. Just come on and bless the Lord with us. Hallelujah. We magnify his great name today because he is King of Kings. He's Lord of Lords. Great God he is. Mighty God he is. He is our shield, our buffer, our strength, everything that we need we find in you. So Holy Spirit, we make room for you today. Come Holy God and have your way in our midst, Lord. Have your way in our midst, God. Have your way in our midst, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We glorify your name, Lord. We magnify your name, Lord. Holy you are, Lord. Holy you are, Lord. Holy you are, Lord. Great God, great God you are. We welcome you this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. We'll bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's worthy of glory. He's worthy of honor. He's worthy of all of our praise. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
no name like the name of Jesus whereby men shall be saved we worship your great name Jesus we thank you dear God that even in the midst of trial we can just call on your name because there's healing there there's salvation there there's peace there there's joy there there's comfort in the name of Jesus hallelujah so this morning we sing unto you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Everybody. 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We call your name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. You're our Savior, 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 Savior. Yes, God, the one and only Savior. Savior, yes, God. Savior. This morning we know him to be a healer. Healer, healer. God, you are a healer. Healer, healer. You are a healer. You are a healer, healer. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For all that you've done, God, we praise you. We go with Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. For all you've done, God. For all you're doing and all that we know you're going to do, Lord. Yeah. We thank you. We thank you. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Yeah. We call.
Praise the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. For he's our rock. He is our fortress. God, we lift you. We extol you. We bless you for being God. Thank you so much for being faithful in our lives. There's none like you in all of the earth. And God, we hallow your name in this place. Wherever we find ourselves, we have learned in this season in everything to give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. So God, we lift up our holy hands without wrath and without doubt. Blessing you and extolling you and exalting your name, God. Magnifying you for who you are, God. And for everything that you've done. Oh God, we love you so much on this morning. Hallelujah. And we declare that on this day, the day that you have made, we declare that this is a day of righteousness. We declare that this is a day of power. We declare that this is a day of authority in the name of Jesus. And God, we bless you on this morning because you are a good father. You are a great God and there's none like you in all of the earth. And so we bless you and so we magnify you and so we extol you and so we lift you up. Hallelujah. And we glorify your name, Lord, in all of the earth. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. 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 Hallelujah. And we bless you and we lift you up and we extol you. You are a great God. You are a holy God. There is none like you in all of the earth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, great and powerful God you are. You're our high tower. We're able to run therein and be safe. We magnify the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let's exalt his name together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We honor God so much on this morning for who he is. For the Lord is good, for the Lord is good, for the Lord is good, for the Lord is good. 
for the Lord is good. Hallelujah, for the Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We honor your name, Lord. We hallow your name in this place. Hallelujah. We lift up our hands, Lord, and we honor your name. Thank you, Jesus. What a great God you are. So glad to be with all of us on this morning, for the Lord is good. I just wish you would just, just, I don't know, in your, wherever you are, just declare that in my house, the name of the Lord is hallowed in my house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There is no name that is greater than the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we honor your name. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, because you are worthy. Hallelujah. Ah, we honor your name. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Lord, 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 Lord. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for all of you who are streaming with us on this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I have learned in everything to give thanks. For this is God's will. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you and me. So we've learned to give thanks in everything. Praise God for you, the people of God, the saints of God, and for all that you're doing. Praise God for where you are. And we pray, Lord, that, that you would continue to be in health even as your soul does prosper. So we thank God. I'm going to get into the word of the Lord this morning. The Lord has, has me in this peculiar place, but I, before we get into the word, we need to, uh, Pastor Tanya and myself, we need to thank you so much for uh, your loving and your kindness that has been shown uh, to uh, the family throughout the last couple of weeks. Uh, you have been incredible, uh, and as we have lost uh, this uh, great woman of God, uh, but you as people of God have just really been tremendous in your love and your care that you have shown towards us. And we, we uh, cannot say thank you enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your presence. Thank you for uh, your uh, prayers. You know, like I know that in the church that they used to say that it is uh, that somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, uh, took time, Pray for me, and uh, I can tell you your prayers work. Uh, we've been making it on the prayers of the believer. Um, I I want to um, I want to praise God for all of you, God's people. I also want to thank God for our production team. Uh, we have a, an incredible team that has just been really been doing a great job. Um, and if you would just right while you're there in your chat space, just put a God bless you and a thank you, Jesus, for those who have really helped us keep the work of ministry going and continuing. Uh, we praise God, praise God, praise God for you. It is, I, I, I say this, um, but I say it um, with, without any hesitation whatsoever. It is an honor and it is definitely a privilege to be able to serve uh, with, alongside you and with you. Uh, you make uh, hard jobs easy. <laughs> you make difficult tasks possible. And um, I'm really, really grateful for whom the Lord has connected us with. Um, and, and that might spawn right into the message of the Lord. Um, but God has connected you with somebody. God has connected you with some people uh, in this season. And I want us to make sure that in this day, this time, this season that we're in, that you realize that God has connected you with some people. And the people he's connected with you, you with are to be a supply, a supply for you. Uh, the Bible, of course, declares that every joint ought to be a supply. Um, but 
I'm learning in this season that most, some of our challenge of being a supply, if you could just hear me for this second, uh, Reverend Selenia, is that we have this challenge in, our, in that we want to be something we're not. We want to do something we weren't called to do. And, and in this season, hear me, hear me, real, hear me quickly, as in this season, as we, Archbishop, thank you, have this liminal transition or, um, where we are at this threshold, where everybody's looking and expecting a change, don't change into what God did not tell you. Uh, don't become what God never made you. See, the world is, is, the world is anticipating and expecting, and as well uh, is that we would begin to step into something that we're not called to do because, hear this, because during the pandemic, we've noticed vacancies. And vacancies does not mean that you ought to fill the position. We got to become and be who God has called us to be. Whenever you become something God has not called you to be, you may fill a vacant position, but you don't give a supply. Y'all, God. You fill a vacant position, but you don't become a supply. You don't give and you don't bring what is needed. You actually cause us now to have to figure out how to do things a whole nother way. Oh, God. But in this season, God is commanding us to begin to shift some things so that, hear this real quick, so we have the right people in the right place doing the right thing. Right people, right place doing the right thing. And, 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 and is it even possible that even here in church, in Christendom, that in the midst of everything that's going on, God says, eh, wait a minute, stop, because too many people have been trying to be something I've never called them to be. And if we just take a pause for a moment, then maybe we can reset some things. And some of us just say, you know what? I really don't need to do this. I, that's not who I was called to be. That's not who God has made me to be. And I haven't been able to get life from actually doing it. So God, make me into who you've called me to be. And let me find joy and peace. And nobody's going to push me into, God, I felt like that was a word right there. I can't let you push me into being what God did not call me to be. Y'all, God. Uh, let, let, uh, let's go to, to the 139th Psalm. 139th Psalm, and, and, and there, um, just one verse of Scripture, one, Psalm 139. If, if you hear a little bit of, of, of crackling, I, my apologies. That's my tie. Actually doing some things, and I, I, maybe I'll try to adjust it a little bit uh, so that it makes a little less noise for you. Um, the 139th Psalm. That's better. 139th song. It's all right. 139th song. I just, I just messed up everybody on the production team. They were like, what in the world is he doing? But just, just you, won't have to, you won't have to adjust it later now. All right. 139th song, verse 14. It says this. It says, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Listen, I have been made, y'all could fearfully and wonderfully. Somebody say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Come on, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And because I am fearfully and wonderfully made, then where I am is I have been crafted by the hand of God. Good God Almighty. I have been crafted by the hand of God, and the way God's hand has, has decided to construct me is in the way that, hear this, that even my soul knoweth what's right. Good God Almighty. My soul. Now, you understand that my soul becomes that place of where the breath of God actually enters into, but my soul also becomes the place where I have torment between what happens in the world. It, it begins to strike me in my soul. It is that place that becomes my decision maker. That's my soul. It is my will. It is my emotions. It is my intellect. This is my soul. But God says, the way I've made you, even your soul will know I did right. God Almighty, your soul, could, that's why the psalmist could require that my soul makes her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Magnify the Lord with me because even the way I was made, my soul recognizes God. I want to, I want to, I need to put a subject with this since, since I just started right out the gate. Let me, so, so what I want to talk to us about on today is a Kingly or the kingly vision. Say with me, kingly vision, kingly, kingly vision, kingly vision. And where we've been throughout this season, we need to know that not only have we been made this, but we need to know that there is no failure. Hear me. There is no failure in God. 
Let's, let's just do, if you would, a theological uh, uh, systematic approach with this. Let's approach it systematically. So we're going to, when I say systematically, we're going to think if, then, if, then type of thing. So, so if uh, I have been made by God, and if there is then no failure in God, could God Almighty, then that means whatever God makes cannot produce failure. God Almighty, as long as it's in agreement with the God who created it. Whenever I find myself in a place of failure, it's not because God has failed me. It's because I've stepped outside of who he's created me to be. And can I suggest to us this morning that most of our struggle is because the world has been trying to pull you outside of who God has called us to be. And the truth of the matter is, is that if I can't be who I'm called to be to you, then I begin to become a, uh, a hindrance to the body of Christ. This season, God is calling for us as the body of Christ to be who he's called us to be. And as you be, as you are becoming who God has called you to be. And, and I say becoming only because you're in this world. But the truth of the matter is, is that you have immediate access. Oh God, I got happy right there. I'm gonna say it again, you have immediate access. This isn't like, this isn't like uh, uh, my son trying to figure out when can he drive the red car. He was playing in, in the garage the other day, keep the windows down in the car. He sat in the car, closed the door, and said, room, 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 room. And I said, not yet. But can I tell you, for believers, it's not like that for you. Good God Almighty. When God decided to make you into, immediately you are. You are exactly who God has called you to be. You don't have to process to it. You don't have to work through it. In this exact moment, you are fully who God has called you to be. Mm. But as the enemy's attempt through the world and the world systems to make you believe, to have us to believe that we must have a particular regimen that is accomplished in order to become, how can Brian Wheatley uh, be the man of God that has prophetic all on him if he's never been through minister's class? Uh, how, how, can, how can you be the apostle if you've never gone to a foreign field? How can, how can uh, uh, the brother be the evangelist Hallelujah. If they've never studied all the scriptures that have to do with how to get somebody saved. Good God Almighty. How can Paul preach the first, y'all not, how can Peter preach the first sermon in the church? When he denied Jesus just 40 days before that. I tell you how. You don't need a whole lot of process. You just need agreement. Good God Almighty. With what God said about you. If you agree with God. You can be it now. If you agree with God. You can have the supply now. Just agree with God. Mm. Agree with God. Agree with God. Uh, and stop worrying about the world. The world wants to make sure. Uh, Sean, that we get caught up in the rat race that's happening within the world. Get caught up in the systems. Get caught up in the fight over the crumbs that actually happens. Good God Almighty. And if you even go back to scripture, hallelujah, there's this part of scripture that talks about uh, when the woman whose daughter is sick comes to Jesus. She comes to Jesus and she says, I need you to heal my daughter. And he says, wait a minute, hold up. I can't heal your daughter. He says, because I'm not giving to your kind. And she says back words to him. She says, but wait a minute, wait a minute. Even the dogs, y'all not helping me, even are able to eat the crumbs off the table. And he says, you've got great faith. And he sends back his word and his daughter, then the daughter becomes healed. But listen to this. But what is given to you as the body of Christ is not a crumb ministry. Good God Almighty. Oh, God, Lord Jesus. I know, I know, I know. You were happy that the crumbs had the same thing that the cake had. And yes, they do. But let me tell you, as a believer, let the crumbs be for those who don't know him. But you, those who have been redeemed by the Lord, you get to have your whole cake. Good God Almighty. Okay, I'm getting happy. And I, I, I need to slow down. Let's, let's talk about this thing. I said a systematic approach. So let's, let's, let's go systematic. Let's think through this. Hmm. Uh, Psalm, we read Psalm 139, 14, for I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. 
marvelous are the, thy works that my soul knoweth right well. Hallelujah. I know in Psalm, one, uh, Psalm uh, 73, the 73rd Psalm, uh, 26 through 28 reads this. It says, my flesh and my heart faileth. Hmm. God, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever, God of mine. Which means that when I counted on what I could do, I found myself in a place of failure. But when I realized that the strength of my heart, good God of mine, is God, it changed me from failing. Some, oh, good God of mine. Can I tell you that part of the kingly vision of your life is that you are moving out of failure? Oh, God. Oh, God. Come I want to say it again. You are moving out of failure. Moving out of failure. Regardless of who you are, where you are, regardless of what schooling you've had, what education level you've been through, regardless of where you work, failure will not be your portion. Good God Almighty. Fail, I'm going to say it again. Failure will not be your portion. Failure will not be your portion. For there is no failure in God. God of mine, uh, it will not be your portion. And so, but what becomes critical for me is my dependence and my reliance upon God so that I do not fail. Matthew 6, uh, uh, 33, y'all know this, uh, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And you, and, and you know that when you go through that Matthew 6 and 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, it says in all these other things, things that the world has been trying to tell you to pursue, he says, I just add those things because you first sought the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And when you seek the kingdom of God, it is a sign that you have kingdom vision. You have kingly vision. You have kingly vision. Somebody say kingly vision, kingly vision. You have kingly vision, which means now you are able to see things in a manner that you are no longer a peasant. Good God Almighty. You no longer are in the place, good God Almighty, of hardship and difficulty. Change your perspective. Change your point of view. One of the things that happens during uh, the medieval time that we understand is that the king always has the ability to place his domain, good God Almighty, or his dwelling place on the highest point on the kingdom. Why? So that he can see over all all of the place that he has rule over. And God is saying to us in this season, I'm elevating you so you can change your perspective. God, I feel like preaching. Good God Almighty. Ooh, Brian put me in B flat. Good God Almighty. Just joking. But God's trying to change your kingly vision so you can understand that when I elevate you, you'll be able to see things different. You'll be able to see that what's been coming at you can't touch you, can't hinder you, can't harm you, can't hurt you, can't destroy you because you will be giving a new perspective, a new point of view. All right, let's Let's slow down, Gregory, Andre, Dennis. I'm talking fast as if I am from the southern part of Virginia. Let's keep moving. Kingly, the kingly vision. I, I got I to gotta go to Isaiah. I think I wanted to read that in the message, Bible. I think I put that. Nope, I said New Living Translation. Isaiah 55, 1 through 3. Uh, Isaiah 55, it says, it says this, anyone thirsty, uh, y'all know this, come drink, even if you don't have what the world says you need. Good God. Uh, I'm changing the rules. Good God Almighty. Are y'all happy? I'm happy. Uh, yeah. Uh, that, that's okay. You probably have the words on your, uh, the scripture on your screen. So it says, is anyone thirsty? Come, drink, even if you have no money. Because I'm changing the rules of the banquet. <laughs> Woo, good God. I'm changing the rules of the party. That normally you thought you had to have something to be something. But God says, I'm the qualifier now. Woo, yeah. Come, uh, take your choice of, of, of wine or milk. It's all free. Why spend your money on food? That does not give you strength. Good God Almighty, I'm changing the rules. Good God Almighty, somebody just declared God is changing the rules. And I've got a kingly vision. I'm realizing now that I've been putting my energy in the wrong places. Good God Almighty, why spend your money on food that does not give you strength? Why pay for food that does, not, that do, that does you no good? 
listen, and I will tell you where to get food that is good for your soul. Good God, come with me. Ah, ah. Come to me with your ears wide open. Listen, for the life of your soul is at stake. I am ready to make an everlasting covenant with you. I will give you all the mercies and unfailing love that I promised to David. Hallelujah. The Lord is changing the rules, but you must believe in this kingly vision. Kingly vision. He's changing the rules because we must understand that even as we go here, that he's changing the rules because he is the king. Come on, y'all, of kings. He is the Lord, y'all, of lords. And we must always understand that though there is so much that this world is presenting to us, that according to the 24th Psalm, that the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. He that, y'all not help me, good God, that founded upon the seas and established upon our floods, who shall stand in this holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart and not lifted up his soul into vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Good God Almighty. Ah, God. Ah, so what are you saying, Greg? I'm saying that even when we see what the world has to offer, I need you to know that this, that the world is rightfully his. Good God. I'm going to say that again. i got to say that slow. The world is rightfully his. So though we see things in the world and the world is trying to convince us to go a different way, you don't have to go the way that the world is trying to convince you because God's already made a way plain for us. Oh, God. I am of the persuasion. Let me slow down and talk, man. I'm so excited. I haven't preached in a minute. so. But I... I am absolutely convinced that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings. Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords. And that though we have uh, our education secretary that does not know how to navigate this season that we're in, I am absolutely convinced that Jesus knows how to navigate the season. Yeah, good. Though we have doctors that we're listening to on every side, and some say mask, some say distance, some say do whatever you have to do, but, uh, but all of us want to make sure we're preventing a spread. I'm absolutely convinced that God knows exactly how to navigate the season. Good God Almighty. And so in this season uh, where there's so much coming to all of us, God, I feel like preaching now, where there's so much instruction and so much uh, dialogue coming from every direction and so many opinions, can I tell you, uh, trust the Lord, believers. Good God, trust the Lord, believers. Trust the Lord, believers. Trust the Lord, believers. Because what he's declaring in this season is going to work for our lives. Mm. So, so I must got to trust the Lord and be given to hear this, what he sees. Because what God sees is what I need to believe. So I need my perspective to change. Uh, You have, you probably remember times like this when you were a kid, but I'll go off my times. Story time, just for a second. I hadn't done that in a long time. When I was a kid, I used to go over to my Aunt Joyce's house and spend time with my cousins over there during the summers, summers like this, you know. And I'm sure my mom and dad would be happy that we'd be gone for a couple days. Terry's looking for some of those days right now. And so um, we would go over to my Aunt Joyce's house, and when I go over to my Aunt Joyce's house, there was, um, she lived in this townhouse community at this one time, and there was this mound of hill that was in the middle of the neighborhood out near Essex. And um, it was a a hill, but it was pretty high. And we would play with all the kids in the neighborhood, and we'd play hide and seek and all those other things. And what I would do a lot of times, because uh, I just, I hate losing in games, is I would often uh, situate myself not in low places, but I would go to a high place, so that I could see where everybody went. Y'all could come. You might call it cheating. I call it advantage. (laughs) Uh, But I would would position myself. Oh, God, y'all. Maybe I should change the title of the message. Position for the advantage. (laughs) I would position myself for the advantage. 
I would position myself in high places so that when others were running around and they were looking for places to hide and I was hiding too, I knew where everybody else was, good God Almighty, and I knew they couldn't find me because I was too high for them to look up at, good God Almighty. And God is saying to us believers, change your kingly vision back to a high place so you can get an advantage to everything that's happening in your life now. Somebody say, I'm changing my posture. I'm changing my position to be situated in a high place. In a high place. Yeah. It's making me run. It's making me even saying that makes my mind run. Makes my mind run to, to a course uh, that that P Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John to a high mountain apart. Y'all know it. And he says when he gets there, he says, and the Bible talks about how he is transfigured before them. Y'all know the Mount of Transfiguration. And while they're there, they are able to see uh, what the other nine could not. You get an advantage, good God Almighty, in high places. I saw God in a way that you couldn't see him because I was in a high place. Good God Almighty. So, so we are moving now to high places. Uh, let's, 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 I gotta, I'm going to try to, to tailor this some. The other thing that, that it reminds me of is that as the believers, one of the things that we must always remember is we must remember the word of the Lord to the body of Christ. We must remember the word of the Lord to the body of Christ and the word of the Lord to the body of Christ according to Ezekiel uh, 37 and, and chapter 11. When you go to Ezekiel 37 chapter 11, you find that that becomes, of course, that's the area where we talk about dry bones, right? That's where Ezekiel was in the valley, and he's there, and he's this place of, of dry bones. Bones. But when he's there in chapter 11, what you see, or verse 11, I'm sorry, what you see is you see the question that says, or, or you see the, the inquiry that's there that says that these uh, bones, you know who they, they are? They are the whole house. King James says the whole house of Israel. Uh, this is Israel. They, Israel is full of dry bones. But I've come to let you know on this morning that your kingly vision is opening up graves. Good God Almighty, that your kingly vision, huh, that your new advantage is opening up doors. Good God Almighty, I'm here to let you know that the stone being rolled away from the tomb was not something for Christ, but it was for all of those who believe in Christ. I need you to know that grave doors are opening up on the life of the believer this morning. Good God Almighty, yes, yes, you, yes, yes, you, huh, that wherever you stand, wherever you are, in the midst of uh, anxiety and stress that's happening with others, God says but for you I'm going to open up your grave door you will not be oppressed you will not be depressed you will not be overwhelmed you will not be overtaken but in this day I'm opening up that which has been trying to bury you I'm going to open up that which has been trying to bury you let's read Ezekiel uh, uh, let's read it I marked it 37 and this is I don't know this is New Living Translation as well Listen, verse 11 and 12, it says, Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying, we have become too old, dry bones, and all hope is gone. Good God Almighty. Verse 12 says this, it says, Now give them this message from the sovereign Lord. O oh, my people, I will open your graves of exile and cause you to rise again. Oh, sorry, Lois. I'm so sorry. And cause you to rise again. Then I will bring you back into the land of Israel. Can I present now for you the problem in the text? There is a problem in the text. The problem in the text is that I am commanded to prophesy to dry bones. Dry bones, of course, is old Israel. And it says here that they have no hope, they have no life. That's where they are. They're in this place. The problem with the illustration of the text is that my hearing mechanism to be able to understand and hear uh, my canal is connected directly to uh, my, not just my eardrum, to understand the frequency that's being vibrated when someone speaks that then goes to my brain to be able to then uh, interpret the message that begins to vibrate. Uh, but then, what am I supposed to do with it after that? But the Bible says, listen, y'all, it says that this valley encompasses bones that are dry, which means there is no hearing mechanism available. 
God, I want to tap dance and shout. I want to, God, ah! somebody told me I don't dance no more, so I don't know, just hold it for a second. Ah, but, here it, but, but here it is where, where, where now, ah, how do I speak to something, God, when it doesn't have what's required ah, 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 to receive what I've got to say to it? God says, let me handle it. You just say what I say. Be the king I've called you to be. Change your vision. And if you change your vision and agree with me, you don't have to worry about everything else falling into alignment that the world declares what is necessary. Uh, so bones have no ears. Good God Almighty. But they can hear a word. Uh, okay. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Ah, had to get that out. Ah, they have no ears. They have no ability ah, to, to receive that. But if you speak it, good God Almighty. But if you speak it, it comes to pass. You just have to declare it regardless of who you believe can receive it. I'm going to say it again. You have to declare it regardless of who you believe can receive it. You have to declare it regardless of who you believe can receive it. If you speak it, God has the responsibility after that. <laughs> Open up your mouth, king. Open up your mouth, person of new vision. Open up your mouth, person with a great advantage, and speak what God said and watch you add to the body of Christ. Watch what we are in this place, in this season. I've got, I have some more that I've got to, I've got notes everywhere and turning, not like Ralph Dennis notes, just like Greg Dennis notes. And so, so, so here's one of the things I, I got, I, I have to, I have to say this because I started off with, with kingly vision and I understand that, that understand kingly vision is Sean's, it's Terry's, it's Brian's, all right, it's Todd's. Selenies, right? And let me not name any more people because you might think too many people here. So, so it's, it's all of those who are here is, is, that, is that we have kingly vision. And as we have kingly vision, then, then we also understand that, uh, that I am not threatened. Hear me, believers. I am not threatened by your kingship. I'm not threatened by your kingship. Because this is not the medieval times where we are competing to see who can build the greatest kingdom. We are all serving the king of kings. So the fact that you are king, I'm happy because the way this kingdom works is we look to make everybody a king. Y'all good God. We look for everybody to get in a position where we can declare that we're all kings. Because the more kings they are, the more we glorify the king of kings. It does not satisfy God for there to be 15 kings when he's the king of kings. We got to increase the number of kings that we have. Uh, Y'all, oh, oh God. So, so I need... We need each other to be who God has called us to be. I need you to be in that place. And then, according to Romans 1, I'm going to read King James there because uh, I, didn't, I didn't go back. Romans 1 and, and 12, uh, I realized that when I get there to this place, that it is with you that I get my strength. I get my strength. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by mutual faith, huh, both of you and me. And this, y'all know, this is Paul talking to the church uh, at Rome. And, and there, when he begins to articulate this, he's talking about the struggle that happens and the fact that some of them are feeling alone in their assignment as if they're the only one. They're much like the prophet who runs, uh, hallelujah, last Sunday. Thank you, Lois. Uh, but this, Paul says, listen, you don't need to find comfort in the fact that the society, that's not where you're looking for comfort from. Just know that you've got faith and I've got faith. Good God Almighty. Ooh, Lord, 
Just know that you have faith and somebody on the chat line today is declaring, I've got faith. Good God Almighty. Somebody just while you're chatting there in the chat room, just chat right there, type right there. I have faith. I have faith. Because I know if you have faith and I've got faith, then we're going to make it through this thing. Good God Almighty. And not just make it through it. We're going to thrive in the midst of it. We're going to change our vision. We're going to take on a new posture. We will have kingly vision. Kingly vision. Terry, stop me. Play something soft. Help me finish. Help me quit. Thank you. Here it is where believers are comforted by believers. Let me go back to the top. All of you with kingly vision. Your kingly vision must encompass who God has called you to be. It's not enough. It's not enough that we are in this place and everybody wanting to fill vacancies. The question is, what did God say about you? That's the greatest place you ever have in your life. I I don't want to be, I love him, but I don't want to be Ralph Dennis. I like how Terry plays. and God knows he's even seen me sit on the keyboard sometimes and act like I was him. And he laughed at me like I didn't know what I was doing. I was a little offended, but, you know, I got over it. But I don't want to be Terry. We got too many kids. Ah. <laughs> uh. I don't want to be, I don't want to be you. I've got to be me. You don't want to be me. I've got too many problems. You don't want to be me. It costs too much. I, I hear Ralph Dennis on last, last week. What is the cost of the anointing? Costs too much. Cost too much to be somebody you're not supposed to be. That's always unaffordable. It'll make you broke. It'll send you to bankruptcy. But if you become who God has called you to be, it'll never cost you too much. It may cost you, but it'll never cost you too much because the reward of being who God has called you to be is so great. So I encourage us to make sure that we are there. I want to read. This is out of the Message Bible. I'm going to read this. I'm closing now. But I want to read this. This is Romans 8 and 15. I'm starting at verse 15. I, I did the message Bible in this one. I decided to join up with the millennials, you know. And since, you know, they like the message Bible, you know, it's gangster. So um, I, I decided to read the message Bible today. Y'all know I like using the Jesus Bible, King James. But let's, uh, Romans 15, Romans 8 and 15, 8 and 15, Romans 8 and 15. The Message Bible takes you 15 to 17. So it says this. It says, ooh, hear this. King leave this. This resurrection life you've received from God is not timid, grave-tending life. It's not a timid, grave-tending life. I'm going to say it again. It's not a timid, grave-tending life. It's adventurously expected. Greeting God with a childlike, what's, what's next, Papa? Here's one of the points i got to make sure we get. God's spirit touches our spirits and confirms who we really are. We know who he is, and we know who we are. Father, and children. And we know we are going to get what's coming to us. An unbelievable inheritance. We go through exactly what Christ goes through. If we go through the hard times with him, then we then we're certainly going through the good times. 
One of the points of emphasis that happens in this text that we often do not talk about is that there's a spirit that wants to keep you outside of calling God Father. There's a spirit that does not want to be at work where you consider your proximity to God to be so close. And you cannot allow that spirit to rule your heart. So you got to let God's spirit speak to that spirit and transform you so when you know who you are and you say, one thing I know for sure, and this is genderless. I'm talking about positional. I am a son. I am a son. Father, we thank you so much for who you are and we thank you for your word. Thank you that you do all things well. And God, we are not trying to be in a place where we are doing what others have done. We've seen it. We're not mimicking other ministries, lifestyles. And God, though we've been trying to make sure that your ministry doesn't fall to the ground, God, we resist filling gaps that we're not called to fill. Give us Grace for our assignment. Give us grace to do what you've called us to do. But more importantly, grace to be who you've called us to be. God, we declare that as we are who you've called us to be, that we rise to a new position, a new posture. And as we take this new place, we move with great authority and precision, declaring your work, declaring your glory, speaking the truth about you in the earth. For we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For it is the power of God to salvation. And so we thank you for it. Thank you for your love that is unfair. And we declare that as a king who serves the king of the kings. There's no failure in Christ, so we shall not be defeated. And we glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've heard this word and you don't have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, failure is your best result. Your best result is at some point you will fail. And you don't get a whole lot of talk about this, but let's be clear. You have damnation coming your way. But the Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, that ye shall be saved. You shall be saved. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But all of us also have access to the God who makes up the difference. Accept him in your heart today. Make him Lord of your life. That easy. You confess him Lord of your life. You believe in your heart. You confess with your mouth. And say, we invite you to come be a part of Kingdom Worship Center or some Bible-believing church. This time, you might as well join Kingdom Worship Center, even if you are in Rome this morning. Hey, we're all online having church. So you might as well be a part of Kingdom Worship Center. We invite you to be a part of the body of Christ. Now, I want to invite you as well during this time to consider your time of song. Last week when I was, last Sunday when I was watching the stream, I said, oh, that's right. I got to get my phone and I grabbed my phone. So I want you to, to grab your phones or tablets or however it is that you give in an electronic way. And if you don't give electronically and you mail your, your gifts, then maybe even grab your checkbook now. and Go ahead and let's write out your envelope. But let's give corporately this morning. Let's, let's come together and give in a corporate way. And David said, I will not offer unto the Lord, to the Lord, that which costs me nothing. So this morning I invite you to tithe. Tithe means tenth. And so if you made $100 this week and you probably did better than that. Unemployment gave you at least 600, right? 
think it was, at least at some point. So if you got $600 from unemployment, your tithe is $60. A lot of us say, you know what? I just really, I can't afford to do this. I can't afford to do it. But if you would ask some people who do it, they would say, you can't afford not to do it. Is that when you don't do this, listen, listen to somebody, pastor, bishop, who has tried not doing it. It doesn't work. <laughs> Tithe. Bring it back to the Lord. And let the Lord bless you. Put your hands in. I've, I, don't, I don't know how God does what he does, but I'm grateful that he does. It's not my job to figure it out. It's my job to obey. So you have all of your different ways of giving. They've probably come on the screen. You know, the cash app. Giveify online at kingdomworshipcenter.org and mailing it to the church at 6419 York Road. Just please make sure that you're helping us continue the work of ministry. Kingdom Worship Center has been awesome during this season. We have fed, if I were to just do off the top of my head a count, we have probably, if you can consider the Purdue truck that could feed uh, up to 4,000 people, right? I think that's the number that we got, um, or 4,000 families. I think we can probably say that during this season, that little old Kingdom Worship Center, from a kingdom perspective, has probably fed over 10,000 families during this time. Over 10,000. And that's, we have, listen, we've been in existence. Kingdom Worship Center came into existence in 1927. So we are 93 years old. And I'm sure in 93 years, we have never had one year where we decided to feed 10,000. No matter how many chicken dinners we used to have for a building fund. <laughs> but, or fish fries. But let me tell you, the Lord has a way of expanding our reach. And he's expanding your reach too. He's expanding your reach. We love you. We pray God's blessings upon you. May the blessings of the Lord make you rich and add no sorrow. God bless you. Be blessed. Have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday.